Hi there, it's Mike Stevenson. So in the video today, we're going to take a look at how to configure um, the ASC for Logic Apps. Um, we're going to use Terraform to set it up. And I'm basically, I'm going to share this Terraform solution on um, GitHub so people can have a look at what it looks like. And, um, and then this video is intended to just be a walkthrough. So couple of things to note. Um, one of the key benefits of using Terraform, you'll notice in the console here, is um, in addition to setting up your environment, you also, particularly when you're doing a proof of concept like this, I want to kill the environment when I'm not using it. And, um, and that reduces the cost overhead. So here you can see the Terraform destroy command. And that basically went, and you, you, know, you can see the, the history here. Um, I don't know if the console goes back far enough, but it would have went through when there was about 35 resources get created in my environment and um, and it can just destroy them by just running the destroy command. So in fact, actually you can see it was 35 there. Um, one of the challenges around cleaning the environment down is because I've got um, private DNS zones in the virtual network and they're all kind of linked together. Um, you can't just go and... Um, just delete them directly from the portal without having to go inside the DNS zones and deleting the um, deleting the records and deleting the link to the VNets. There's a lot of steps if you want to actually manually do it. Um, and a zero kind of, you know, if you try to delete the DNS zone, it'll say, look, there's a sub resource you need to delete that first. Whereas Terraform can work out all those dependencies and go and kind of clean it out effectively. So one of the one of the good wins with Terraform there. Now. <clears throat> just to walk through this solution, so I've got a couple of variables defined down in here for some of the common things like uh, my environment name, resource group, and, and default tags. So if I was doing a DevOps process, what I might do if I was deploying multiple environments would be inject the name of these variables in at runtime as one of the things. But when I run it locally off my dev box, I can just specify in a local.tf files file. So I'm saying, look, here's the name of my environment. That's my resource group name. Here's my, my tags and stuff. And then one of the things I've also defined is some naming conventions. So I've got um, naming conventions for some of the resources I'm setting up. Um, so if I do a prefix on those names, um, and I've also configured my organization and my product, which will just let me parameterize resource name so if i want to set this up for a different um environment or a different demo i can just kind of change the organization and the product name and, and just run it which i think will help people who might want to use this to help them get started um in my main.tf i'm just defining um some data objects which will point to Azure AD and my Azure resource groups and just give me the current context. So with Terraform, you would usually do an AZ CLI login. This will give you um, access to like the subscription that you're pointing to and stuff like that. So they're um, sort of read-only resources that you can get some uh, runtime variables from. Now, anyone who's not familiar with Terraform, what you would be doing here is you'd point to the folder that your Terraform workspace is in, and then you're running commands and it'll look at all of the .tf and .tf files files and kind of work out the dependencies between objects. So you just define objects in files and it'll go and kind of figure the rest out. It's not like a, a sort of procedural program and where there's a, a sort of um, entry point that it goes and runs code in order kind of thing. Now, one of the things I've got down here, this Terraform providers file, this is where I'm setting up the providers that I want to use in this solution. So you'll notice here I've got the HTTP provider. If I want to get a random number, I can use the random provider. But the main ones I'm going to use are Azure AD, Azure RM and AZ API. So Azure RM kind of wraps the management API, AZ API. Um, it does a similar thing, but it's a bit more generic, a bit more like a bicep kind of scenario where you can just call the operations, whereas these are a bit more strongly typed in a way, I guess, probably is the easiest way to describe it. And they're a bit more, um, it's almost like a like a wrapper layer on top of the management API aimed at helping 
make it easy to configure resources but each of these areas has their own um has their own documentation of how to use them and i think the easiest way to think of it is if you think of as your rm being strongly typed objects and az api being a generic um wrapper on top of the rest api that's you know sort of more loosely tied um now in this solution what i one of the things i quite often do is you've got two types of objects for terraform you've got read-only data objects and then resources so read-only data objects is something you point to in azure or somewhere else and you're going to get some um some data from it and then a resource is an object that you're going to manage change update create so i usually just separate these so i've got these data dot something files so i can easily find where my data objects are and then res dot something are the, the resources i'm going to manage so just having a quick look up here um i've got data dot http so i can get my own ip address here and just have that as a local um a local parameter and i can access so i kind of treat that as if this is the machine running the job so if i want to set any firewalls up i can give myself access from my dev machine without having to live inside a network or something if i wanted to um i also would point to my resource groups so because i'm building an azure integration services platform i'm going to have my ais resource group here <clears throat> and then any time I reference that in other parts of the script, I can just point to this data object and I've got access to the resource group. Now, the environment that we're going to build is basically um, an, is, um, an app surface environment that will be connected to a virtual network. There'll be DNS zones set up. There'll be a storage account, which will be kind of like a central storage account for any data I want my integration platform to store. I'm going to connect that to a private network. I'm going to have a key vault also connected to a private network. And then my when I deploy a logic app onto my ESE, I'll be able to use key vault reference to reference the, um, the secret I'm going to create. So let's start um, with a VNet's probably the best place to start. So what I've got here is I've got some locals at the top. So here's the parameterization of my VNet name. So you can see <clears throat> this is where I'm using my prefix. And then I've got my organization, my product, and my environment name. Um, and then down here, when I create my virtual network, this is where I, I'll supply that VNet name. So it becomes really easy to parameterize that for different environments. Or if you're using it for your own setup, you just need to change the, um, the name and conventions file. Now, um, I've also got address prefixes. So I think if I remember right from the documentation, you need a slash 24 for the ESE. So I've just set that up here. I'm also going to create a subnet. Um, where any private endpoints I create for my AIS uh, resources will be configured to listen on that single subnet just for private endpoint resources. So I'm going to create my virtual network here. I'm going to create the subnet for the outbound traffic for the ESE. So I'm going to create this subnet here. Now I need to delegate that to the um, Microsoft web hosting environment. So that'll basically take care of that bit. And this, this is all living inside this subnet resource and I've configured some service endpoints. Um, and likewise, I've set up the private endpoints um, subnet down here as well. Now I also need to set up my um, private DNS zone. So I'm gonna create the name up at the top like we did for the um, for the vnet so i'll create my dns zone here you'll notice on a lot of the resources i'm uh, setting up tags as well so i've got some default tags which get defined in my environment file here and then um and then i can override and, and kind of merge in some custom tags so I've, usually i've got things like what is the name of the resource um so here that would be you know, maybe me doing something like taking the environment name out of it or something so you can see the same resources across environments i usually put a description um of what it does maybe what it's used by and then the reference to the terraform object that creates the resource so i've easily got traceability back to my terraform solution here we're going to link um <clears throat> link the um 
DNS zone to the virtual network. So you can see you just point to those two and, the, and it'll link them together. And I've, I've just used an explicit depends on here. Some, one of the things Terraform will work out a lot of the dependencies. Sometimes you, um, you kind of might explicitly document them yourself or sometimes if you've got a bit of abstraction it's not always that obvious but I've, in this case I've just um, explicitly defined them so it's really clear. Um, I'm then going to create a, a private DNS zone for all of the private links that I need. So what I've done here just to make this a bit easier is um, I've got a variable called private link DNS endpoints which I think I've defined down here. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to have um, we're going to like iterate a loop over this uh, map object and I'm basically going to have a list of DNS zones that I want to set up. So I've got one for app service, one for key vault and the various storage endpoints. And what will happen is because we're using the for each in Terraform, it'll basically go and execute this resource once for every object in that variable we've just looked at and it'll go and configure a private DNS zone using that name um, in the resource group, put the tags on it. And then the next one down is <clears throat> gonna do exactly the same thing, but we're gonna link the DNS zone to the virtual network. So these two objects will set all of our DNS zones up um, connected to the virtual network. So that, that does all of our DNS and this does all of our um, VNet, so you know, not that complicated if you get used to this a little bit. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is um, I've got um, some logs here. So I've got a log analytics workspace. I've got an application insights um, instance here, and I'm gonna link it to log analytics. Now, one of the things I haven't done is in this demo, I wanna focus on the ESC, so I haven't set up um, private endpoints on these or anything like that. Um, I may look at that at some future point, and that, that's kind of what I want to do with this demo is just build it up as I go so I can destroy it when I'm not using it for a few weeks and then I can recreate it easily. Um, <clears throat> so next up, if we take a look at the key vault, so what we've got here is I've got the locals defining my key vault name. I'm going to have an allow list um, so I can let my machine have access to it while I'm setting it up. And um, and also I'm gonna grab the private link address for the key vault here. This will create my key vault resource and I'm gonna set a bunch of properties on it here. I'm gonna set um, the network ACL. So I'm allowing Azure services to access it. I've, um, I've allowed my IP. So when I, when I configure it, I can still go and create keys in it for now. Um, there's a couple of other ways you can kind of handle this with build agents and stuff. Um, things like having a, a um, VM scale set in the network so your, your build can run on network means in certain environments you can kind of just set that to not allow anybody to have IP access. But when you're local developing, if you're not on, on a network, um, it's quite a good way to like let yourself do what you need to do. Now... One of the things that you can do with a network integration is I could put the outbound subnet range as a link as a virtual network on the key vault. So that's one way you can configure the virtual network firewall. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do that's different is I'm going to set up a private endpoint for that key vault. There's a little bit of, um, this is quite a cool little thing I've done actually. So. There's a little bit of work to set up the private endpoint and configure it. So I've created a Terraform module, um, which points to this folder path up here, which you'll notice is up here. So basically, I'm defining a bunch of variables that you would pass in. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to run, we're going to create a name for the private endpoint. This bit will create the private endpoint here. And it'll set up, you know, which subnet it belongs to, which sub uh, sub resource name, and then after the private endpoint's created, my data object will go and read that private endpoint, which will give me access to the IP address for the private endpoint. And then here, I'm going to create a DNS zone A record, um, where I'm going to point to the private IP address for the res the private endpoint I've just created, which is this bit here. 
And then finally, I'm going to create a CNAME record on the main DNS zone, which will basically redirect traffic for my key vault or my storage account. It'll redirect it to go through the private endpoint. Um, now, what I can do is rather than having to define these four resources to create my private endpoint, add the DNS zone entries, rather than having to do them every single time, I can put them in a module up here. And um, in my key vault, all I have to do is sort of define an instance of my module saying, set up the key vault's private, I, uh, private endpoint, pass in the resource IDs here, pass in the subnet, the sub resource name, and then the, the details for the um, DNS zones. And then it'll go and run all those um, those resources and just set them up. And I just I can use this as like a reusable uh, module here. And then after my um, after my DNS zone, uh, sorry, after my private endpoint, I'm going to add a secret, which will just be given this name, and I'm going to use that to demo that my Logic App can talk to it. Uh, next up, we've got the storage account. So. I'm going to define again like the key vault. We've got some locals at the top for my storage account name. Um, we set a bunch of settings up here. We set the tags up. We configure the network rules here. So we're going to have a default deny. I'm going to allow my local IP for setting it up. Um, and then I'm going to configure a private endpoint for the DNS, uh, sorry, the DFS endpoint for my storage account and a private endpoint for the blob endpoint. So these, this basically will do that private endpoint and it's associated DNS zones entries and this one will do that one. Um, then I'm going to create a test container and I'm going to put a, um, a file inside it. So if you saw the previous video, you would have seen the logic app access the storage account read a file and we could see that in the run history. So this down here is how we set that file up. Now, the thing to remember when Terraform runs, it doesn't necessarily execute in the order that these are defined. What it'll do is it'll work out all the dependencies and then it'll execute them in the right order, regardless of where things are coded in, in this folder. It kind of works all that out for you. Um, so really the code here is just me grouping the resources into files that make sense to put them in that file and, and it gives me like a, a readable flow so I know where stuff is. After the storage we're now on the, uh, the ASC itself so here I'm defining some locals for the ASC name and then the app service plan that's going to live on the ASC so we'll have these names here and then I've got my price and SKU. So if, if you wanted to change that SKU, you would just configure it here. In the real world, you might set that from a variable in, in a deployment pipeline, maybe. Now, this resource here I'll set to my um, app service environment v3. So I um, configure its name, its resource group. I set which subnet it's going to point to. Um, so that'll give it the outbound traffic. Um, if I want to have a, an internal load balancer, I can um, have it configured here. I, I'm going to choose to allow private endpoints. I would configure whether I want zone redundant, or you, you've got, I think if I remember right from the documentation, you can have either that, or you can have a dedicated um, host account. Um, so in this case, I think we're, we're just going to leave it as is. You can set some cluster settings here so if you've got um, you want to disable tls for example um one thing to note from the um from the documentation so i think the apis on the management api don't support changing the um the tags on your resource so i think i've basically um i've configured it so that um I'm not setting up the tags on the ASC. You can just do that separately by hand. And I'm going to tell Terraform's lifecycle to just ignore any changes made to the tags. So I think there is the documentation says if you change the tags, it'll usually require you, you to uh, recreate the ASC, which we don't really want to do. So I'm going to just ignore that for now. Um, and and I'm, if, if the tags change, Terraform will just ignore it. Now... After you've created your ASC, you need to create your app service plan. So here, we're just going to say we want a Windows plan. 
we've got the name of the SKU from above and here we're going to point to the ASC that it'll it'll kind of point that app service plan at and that, that's really the bit that kind of sets it up now the point to note here is that the ASC takes a long time to create that first time so it'll um I think it took me about four and a half hours for Azure to create the ASC so just be aware of that um, once that's all done then we'd have the logic app so um, here I'm, I'm this is just sample logic app um, to give you an example so I've got the name of it so I've got its full name I'm going to actually um, I think it's a good idea creating a separate storage account for each logic app as a general rule so I'm going to create another storage account not for the shared data storage but this is just for the, the kind of work queues behind the scenes for the logic app so I'm going to configure its access um, with that storage account, I haven't set that to be part of the VNet, but you can do that if you want to. Um, and then we create the logic app here. And the key thing is we're just pointing it to the app service plan we created, which lives on the ESE, and that will deploy it to the ESE instead of it being a WS1 plan. And that, that's really all that I need to do. That's different from a logic app perspective at this point. Um, I think the other thing you probably want actually is um, the VNet root all. So if you set that to one, that'll route your traffic um, through the through the VNet for um, outbound traffic from the Logic App. Everything else is pretty much um, as per normal Logic App stuff. Here I've got my um, pointing to the key for my um, App Insights. Um, here I'm setting up the Key Vault reference. So I'm just pointing to the name of the Key Vault and the name of the secret I want. And then that'll read it at runtime. So we saw yesterday in the other video that you could see the key vault reference was ticked to show it could read it okay, even though it was going over the private endpoint. Um, there's a few other settings here which um, are common for logic apps. I'm setting up my system assigned managed identity. I've told Terraform to ignore some changes. So some app settings and stuff as you might change that Terraform kind of doesn't really want to care about. So they just ignore them and then I do um, <clears throat> for my logic app I am setting its managed identity to have access to the key vault to list and get secrets so that'll let that key vault reference work and that's kind of pretty much everything in here so if I do um, a terraform plan So it'll go and inspect what's in my resource group. So I think we saw um, here there's there's nothing in my resource group at the minute. So it'll go and inspect the resource group, see what's there, compare it with the state file and try and figure out what it needs to do. So this is where your, your state files kind of for the desired state config lets you see what you've got in the cloud, what you think you've already deployed and what changes you'd make. So here you can see I've got 35 things to add. And it'll go through and tell you all the details about what it's going to configure, what it's going to add. It might tell you it needs to change something if you've already deployed it. So the idea is you might deploy it, then you want to change something. So the next time your plan ran, it might say, oh, there's only one resource change. So that's the only thing we'll go and update when everything else just gets ignored. And that's really um, the overview of, of Terraform. So hopefully people find that really useful. Um, and gives us um, you know not just what it looks like when it's deployed to an ASC um, on logic apps but also how to set that up how to deploy it um, I guess one thing I would say just to finish is I think a lot of people you're probably going to have this terraformer bicep for actually configuring your logic app as part of your logic app solution alongside the code so I think you might set your baseline infrastructure up with terraform and then this one here you'd probably put with the code because you're probably going to want to modify these app settings as you add new workflow parameters and that kind of thing. I think that's one of the bits for Logic App Standard where you kind of have to have the, the management of the Logic App resource alongside the code to keep those two in sync. Uh, but hopefully people enjoy this video. Um, hopefully you'd like to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can keep up to date when I release new ones. Um, hope everybody has an awesome week. Take care.